which of you made a big impression in your respective debut Hindi films? I want to ask you, was there a moment for each of you that you thought, okay, I'm through, I've passed? You know, was it a particular review? Was it first opening weekend numbers? Was it a particular compliment? What was the moment at which you knew that, okay, I've sailed through, I'm in? For me, the first time I actually went theatre hopping, uh, I didn't ever imagine that it's going to be a house full and people are going to walk out with a smile on their face. Mm. That was the main intention our director had, even when he would explain me things. Uh, this was like a disclaimer he gave me, ki, you know, when you cry, you have to cry with a smile. And when I saw that happen in a theatre that was full of people smiling, clapping, whistling, cheering for you, that, that was something I had not expected. That was definitely a time where I thought, okay, the film has gotten what it deserves. Okay, okay. I think uh, she kind of hit the nail. Uh, for me, it was, uh, the numbers really didn't make sense to me because I was very new at that point. Right. And I still am. But uh, I remember going to KT Galaxy with her and uh, then we were seeing the reactions. With, we were in the you know, we projection were, Yeah, and right. we could still we hear all the reactions there. and we were so happy. It was really, I thought that was what did it for me, really. Yeah, I think that plus I feel when, because um, you know when I, honestly when I was going for all the interviews, mm. initially, because people didn't know me, they right. knew him more. Correct. So it was coming, uh, I was somewhere feeling that okay, you know, I hope that people notice me and watch my performance too. Right. Which I think after the film, uh, maybe a week ke baad, after one week had passed, then probably uh, when people in their review, there was one, two lines where they emphasized on me as mm -hmm. well. So I think that felt really nice. Sure. And um, more than that, I think when you just walk out and you hear Hero Panti, Hero Panti, Hero Panti <laughs> from the background, right. and when kids really uh, recognize you, I think that is more of a recognition for me. Okay. okay. Yeah. My story is slightly different. I don't think the point of my part was for anyone to smile or come out <laughs> smile. Definitely not the kids. Right. Um, so, but uh, I, I think I was very aware uh, the risk and the chance that my production house was taking with me. And after mm. our first test screening, I met Adi sir, and uh, he said, "You must be happy. That was a good job." And I think that in itself, because he's a man of very few he words, exactly right. like that. So yeah, so he, he, just that one line. And for me, the fact that the person who'd taken a chance with me um, was okay with my performance. That, that was a big deal for okay. me, yeah. For me, it was quite different, you know. Um, while they were editing, Hansel sir kept telling me that I did a phenomenal job and, you know, Bhatsaab came and said, you know, you're the hero. But, you know, then I watched the first edit and I just didn't like myself. I said, oh my God, this is it, I'm over. <laughs> this was the only chance I had and I screwed it up. <laughs> so I went back home weeping, I cried. Then my mom said, no, 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 this is not, I'm sure you'll do better, you'll get another opportunity. But when the reviews actually started pouring in, it was quite nice, you know, they said that, you know, I could stand my grounds against Rajkumar right. and, you know, I had something to give. So that was good, but I just feel that, you know, there's a lot more. Okay, okay. Did you have a plan B lined up just in case people hated you, just in case you were never going to be offered another film? Did you have a plan B lined up? Never, you know, I... I never thought that this could, you know, if this doesn't work, what happens? Mm. Um, I thought maybe I'll go and tell my dad that, you know, okay, I'm done, get me married. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in there shouldn't be a plan A if there's a plan B. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's my code. At least. So it was, it was this or nothing It else. was all or nothing, yeah. Okay. For me, uh, for starters, I didn't expect YRF to have a three film deal with me. That in Correct. itself was a very big thing that had happened. But uh, before the film happened, I was on a rut ki I picture banaungi, I film likhungi. And Shanu would always tell me that if you direct karna hota, abhi tak script ready hoti. So definitely, I don't know if it's my if it's a plan B, but that's definitely something that I'm going to do in the future for okay. sure. But uh, you know, ek bar you act. You can't yeah, do like anything <laughs> else. Like, you can't. It can't happen. Bitten by the bug. It can't. I don't think I've had such a high in my life ever apart from the time when I was shooting. Okay. It's definitely an addiction. Okay. So, no plan I think, B. I feel that if, you, if you're if you dreaming about something, mm. you can't do anything else apart from that. Because for me, um, 
Yes, for my parents there was a plan B. Mm. Um, yeah, I've done engineering. Engineering, I, yeah. Um, you have your GMAT scores. Yes, so that that <laughs> score was actually yeah. somewhere. Um, I had done like twenty days of my Telugu film shoot. Mm. I signed Hero Panti. I was also doing coaching classes that time okay. for GMAT. So I gave GMAT after those twenty days right. only for my parents because they wanted a score. <laughs> but in my head, I know that I can never use that score because okay. you know once you start acting, and I know that this is something I'm dreaming of. This is something I really enjoy, and mm. it gives me happiness. You can't go to something else. And also, I feel whether you're one film old or whatever, you become a little known to people. I think it's very difficult to move on to another field. Mm. I mean, until unless you really don't like acting, which is a different case. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, definitely. Like I agree with Tiger. There's you can't have a, a plan B if your focus is is plan A. Okay. And I'd spent about five years in Bombay before the film happened. Mm. So when you're sort of living plan B already, right. and you move to plan A, <laughs> you don't want to ever get back to plan B. Yeah. <laughs> Now, of the five of you, only Tiger and Kriti had the star-making launch. But so, like, how you played mother of a young child in City Lights, Bhumi, you played a bride who is constantly ridiculed by her husband and others for being overweight. Tahir, you played a despicable villain, a pimp, a flesh trader in Mardani. Did you know that? What I want to ask you is, <laughs> were you advised? Against taking these parts, did people tell you that you'd be typecast in these parts if you start your career playing these kind of roles? No, I I didn't take anybody's advice. Mm. You know, I don't think so. It's important uh, for anybody to tell me that what's right and what's wrong for me. I thought this is it. This is my chance. I must must grab it. Of course, playing a mother was so alien because. Of course, I have no motherly feelings. Right. <laughs> but right. I just felt that she's my younger sister, mm. and this is mm. this is all I have, and I have to do this. Okay. For sure, like playing the the kingpin of a of a child trafficking racket was yeah. also alien. <laughs> uh, I have no such uh, inclinations. But li like she said, like when you get an opportunity yeah. with, with the kind of banner it. and director, you just uh, you just wing it. You mm. take it and and run with it. But you know, you'd been in Bombay for five years trying yeah. to make it. Were there friends? Were there you know? Were there other filmmakers saying, really, you want to start your career that way? Um, did yeah. that happen? Um, it was myself more than anything because I'd been through the route that any actor does. I'd been to dance classes, I'd been to mixed martial art, the typical stereotype, mm. uh, you know, debut that everyone dreams of. Right. And then you read the first page of your introduction scene, and it's where you're sitting with a 13-year-old in the room. And so I, I did feel it for a bit, but then I also knew the way the character was going to be mounted. There was something anti-heroish about the way he, they were going to stylize him and the way he was going to talk. So there was going to be a balance. But um, I, I believe the time is right where if you do anything with conviction, you can and you make the audience believe they appreciate that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Bumi? Uh, you know, for me, I read the script uh, before this audition or before they even considered me to be a part uh, of the film because okay. I was casting for the movie. And the moment I read the script, I was like, wow, this is going to be a special from, uh, film from YRF. Mm. I think the only person I spoke to was my mother, but even she's somebody who is very empowered herself as a human being. So again, I think I kind of agree with Patra Lake. I didn't really ask anybody. Uh, I was pretty sure that this would be something very good for me. But in and a business that is so image driven, you were asked to put on weight yes. for this part. Yes. Surely it crossed your mind that... Not really because okay. I was always an overweight girl. It wasn't that I was really skinny and then I had to get uh, then I had to gain 50 kgs to play Sandhya. Mm. I was a plum regular Indian girl, and for me gaining weight was a lot of fun because I'm very passionate about food. Okay. I can yeah food <laughs> makes me yeah food makes me really happy. <laughs> so it wasn't really a thing that uh, I didn't have any apprehensions of any sort. Uh, the gaining weight process was something that my role required me to do. So it's it's very natural for an actor to do that. I'm sure if there was any other girl in my place, right. she too would have done it. And then you have a banner. Then Sharath is an amazing director. Mm. I'd already seen 10 ML Love. Mm. Then you have Manish Sharma. And I totally, I was very sure that I'm going to connect with their sensibilities the moment I had read the script. Right. The script was a hero from day one. Mm. It wasn't one of those films that the script was bad and it turned out to be a good film. The script was very good. And the film just turned out to be better than the script. So definitely no two ways, no two thoughts about it. Okay, okay. Tiger Krithi, the two of you were launched in what can be described as a star-making vehicle. Um, the overnight success of Hiropanti 
positioned you all as young stars who are now in you know vying for the same parts as say a Varun Dhawan and a Siddharth Malhotra. Um, you know, I know that you're being considered for the same roles that Alia Bhatt is. Are there times when you're overwhelmed by it all, by the overnight success? Are there moments where you step back and think, wow, that was quick uh, and that was... I think it, it hits me when I, I step out of my house. Mm. Um, I, I don't, uh, I can't do the, most of the things I used to do normally. You know, just go for a run on the road or walk and or just go watch a movie with a few friends. That's a little difficult now, but right. it's 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 such a good feeling, you know, when just to be appreciated and loved. And when when somebody comes up to you, a little kid comes up to you and says, "Ari, I want to I want to dance like you. Or I can you teach me how to do this or that?" I mean, that's the best feeling for me. And I so feel I flip. literally feel like flying <laughs> in front of people. And then a show just starts for everybody, <laughs> and that's my high in life now. You so know, you're happy so to please? I, I'm so happy. It's, 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 I'm not complaining. I'm very happy right now. Okay. Yeah. You know, as you said, it, it's overwhelming, but it's also sometimes a little unreal and a little, you know, dreamlike. Sure. Like there are moments when, especially this happened to me during the award functions. Mm. I was sitting there and there's so many times when suddenly I'm, I'll feel that, okay, I'm sitting with all these people. I used to watch all this on TV. <laughs> I mean, it's really uh, a totally different world for me. Right. It's something that, you know, your TV has just come alive. Sure. So <laughs> that moment has been there, like very often, uh, recently, in fact. Mm. Um, and as far as you're seeing uh, the other young actors, you're being considered for the same roles and all. Uh, that does feel good. That does feel that, okay, maybe I do have something mm. in me which is uh, just unique to me, which is why people are approaching. But I'm, I'm just thankful that, you know, the industry has kind of accepted uh, in a very positive way. Right. And, uh, yeah, that's what. <laughs> yeah. To all of you, is there one particular actor um, who you greatly admire, whose work you greatly admire, whose career you envy and would like to emulate, perhaps? Ritik Roshan. Yeah. I I mean, for me, he's he's like the blueprint I'd like to follow. Okay. For, for I mean, he's got everything. What doesn't he have? <laughs> I mean, from you know, you either have people who are just so aesthetically focused but forget about the craft. True. Or some people who are just so craft driven but you know don't look like a star. Mm -hmm. But he's married that so beautifully, mm -hmm. and I think that's so tough to do. You know. Not many people can do that, and I, I hope someday I, I reach at least 50% of what he has. Okay. So yeah, that's my dream. I think Amitabh Bachchan is someone I grew up watching. I don't know, I, I think emulating his career would be a bit of a far-fetched on, on this table. <laughs> uh, but definitely one of the actors who I grew up watching and just always in awe of. Did you yeah. say his dialogues in front of the mirror? All the time. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. For me, it has to be Meryl Streep. Mm. Uh, Emulating is a far cry. I mean, I can't even imagine. But yes, I, you know, just watching her films, I'm like, this woman just changes. It's not only her body language, the languages that she picks up. True. It's, I mean, she's just a goddess, a living goddess, a legend that we are just so lucky to be at the same time that she's performing. Sure. So I get, she has, I mean, she, I get so much inspiration from her. Okay. I think um, as a child, I was always a Madhuri Dixit fan. I used to dance on, I, I remember dancing on Akhya Milao Kabi Akhya Churao. Okay. Like copying the steps, each each step and everything. And then everyone used to come and say, Achha, dance karke dikhao and all of that. But uh, yeah, I think she is someone who just changes expressions. Like, like in one sentence, she'll have three expressions. True. And uh, she's like graceful, she's beautiful. She just um, plays her part really well. Uh, Career-wise, I feel Ranbir Kapoor, I think, has really, um, you know, what you say, selected the right films. Right. He's, he's someone who's kept a balance, I feel. Mm. He's not someone who's only gone the RT way. He's done a barfi, he's done a ye jawani, And jawani. that's inspiring? Yeah, it's very, because I think it's very important for you to choose the right films. True. Some people sometimes, uh, I think it's not right to just, just do commercial cinema. It's not right to just, just do only one kind of you know, space. Mm. I think uh, he's someone who's kept a balance uh, between, you know, commercial, something that kind of uh, gives him a different opportunity to perform something very different. Right. So he's kept a balance and I think he just performs very well whatever he does. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. 
It's Rani Mukherjee for me. I've been a very big Rani Mukherjee fan since I was a child. Like, kuch kuch hota hai, wow, that film really had an impact on me. Okay. But I think uh, she's really versatile as an actor. She's done Hey Ram, she's done Mardani. And I feel she herself black has broken black. black. She herself has broken a lot of stereotypes. True. Because the biggest thing around me is that I've broken a stereotype. Mm. I feel there have been enough actors in the past also who've done that. It's just that we didn't have an audience for such films. Sure. But I'm a very big Rani Mukherjee fan. There's a fan girl in me that loves her. As an actor, I love her. And I feel she's made a place for herself in the industry. She did not follow a certain path. She did not follow a certain rule. She did the kind of films that she enjoyed. She's also done Hat Kar Di Aapne. Right. You know, so she's done like a lot of her work has been a big contrast from her other films. Sure. So that's something that's really inspired me. I'm a die-hard <laughs> Rani Mukherjee. Like, you know, when she smiles, I go like, <laughs> I really am. I love her. Again, okay, I think even she is someone who's kind of kept a balance True. Yeah. between different Mixed things. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Right. You know, what's interesting at this table, especially in an industry where we, that's constantly being accused of nepotism and, you know, of, of giving star kids a chance. What's interesting is we've got five people here and there's only one star kid. Okay. And <laughs> anyone who's watched Hero Panthi will agree that he's earned his place Absolutely. to be here. Um, I want to ask you, do you feel that the Hindi film industry offers a level playing field to all newcomers or is it still a little biased to star kids? Uh, because I was casting for so many years, mm. I would definitely like to say that that concept that if you're a star kid, you're going to get a film does not exist. YRF uh, has been quite a good platform in itself to prove that we have Tahir, it's me, it's Ranveer, mm. even Pariniti. Okay, she did have a filmy connection, but she wasn't a star kid. So I think today, if you're talented and you fit what the role requires, you'll definitely get a film. The opportunities are a lot more. Okay. Tahir, if you had a Khanna or a Kapoor at the end of your name, would you have still had to well, struggle for five years? No, no one's asked me the question put, put in, that, in that way. I don't know whether struggling is then the word I would use, but mm. I would still have to work for... I'm sure Tiger didn't sign his film and then get on set the next day. Right. There, was, there were years of work that went in uh, uh, behind that. So I'm not sure I would call it struggling then. Right. It would be uh, like, you know, I would Prepare, be working yeah. towards, preparing towards a film that I knew was going to happen. Sure. But here I was five years in the dark and then it, then it happened. I think to answer your question, um, it's probably when the Indian audience, it, it just generates a sense of curiosity to say, yeah, uska beta hai, uska this thing hai. But then after people buy the ticket and they're in the hall, it's your work uh, that needs to speak. And then you're on a level playing field. When the lights go off, do you feel like that, Tiger, that, that you got the break, you earned that break, but now you're pretty much um, sir, sir, I won't out lie. in the pool? Uh, I won't lie. Being my father's son, I thought, um, I mean, I'm not going to complain I'm my father's son. Of course. But, uh, you know, I mean, no, nobody points out to a businessman and then tells him right. that your son is following your footsteps. I mean, mm. that's just nature, I guess, you know, in a way. And I was blessed to be my father's son. I am blessed to be my father's son. And I'm lucky I'm getting offers. And I was getting offers before Hero Pandi from a very young age. Mm. But um, I can't say that uh, it was easy at all. I mean, sure. there was a big expectation from me. There was uh, people had a certain uh, image of me in mind, you know, like a, a Chota Jackie Shroff or something. My aim was to just break out of that mold and try to create a niche myself. Right. Which is why you Which, also didn't do the Hero remake. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And that, that was also... I don't want a comparison with my father at all. Sure. I'm petrified of my father. He's, he's you know, it's interesting the point you raised about why no one asks that question to businessmen. And I think the, the answer to that is because there are enough examples of star kids who don't deserve to still be working, right? I mean, there are enough examples of, of you know, star children who are not very talented and who still are in the business five, seven years later or ten flops later. You've kind of pretty much answered the question on my behalf okay. because I feel that if you're talented, only then you will survive. Mm. But yes, I do feel because I do come from a non-film background and I've seen people around me who are trying for films, people around me who are talented. Right. Uh, I think getting that first opportunity in itself is a huge struggle for someone who's not coming from Correct. a film background. Sure. So I think that is one advantage which probably uh, a person belonging to a film background uh, gets. But again, as he says, you know, there are pros and cons to everything. I'm sure he, he had much more pressure on him than probably I did. Right, I a different, different kind of pressure. Yeah, right. exactly. I had a very different kind of pressure that, you know, I should not get lost in all this. Mm. So, uh, I feel that yes, there are a few people um, 
who have been in the industry because they are star kids and they've kind of uh, gotten opportunities to about five or six films also. Right. So I think that's something which a total non-film background person is not going to get. Sure, sure. The perks that <coughs> the industry bachas have is only till the first film. Mm. Okay. okay, for us the difference is because they have grown up in front of the directors, the producers, so it's easier for them to pick up. Why right. will they go hunting for, oh, Patralika is there, let's pick her up from there. Mm. No, we have to maneuver our way around and get there. So that kind of takes us a little time. But uh, yes, if you're talented enough, I think the industry is really opened up. There's space for everybody. But how far would you go for the sake of a role? Would you call up a filmmaker if you knew that there was this film being made and there's this great role? Absolutely. Would you call up and ask for the role and ask to be considered for the role? Absolutely, I would call up I think the if director. you know a person, yeah, you can, it, there's no harm in just calling up and saying that, okay, you know, I would like to do this thing. But ultimately, I think it totally depends on the director and the producers if they feel you're right for the part right. or not. They won't give it to you because yeah. you called. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they'll yeah. give it to you if you, if you deserve it. But, but do you have a, a Tiger, for someone like you, I mean, who knows the industry in a sense, who knows a lot of people, would you be awkward about making that call? Absolutely, sir. Yeah. I, I don't want to uh, disrespect my family or sure. take advantage of my father's name in any way. I believe if, if I'm truly worthy, then uh, they would rather, you know, somehow contact me. Okay. But at the same time, I know there's a lot of ego in the industry and I don't want to rub anybody the wrong way or, mm. you know, I can't expect for, you know, uh, some big big shot to uh, give me a big film or anything. If, if my work is good and if they, they see me fit the role, then why not? I, I wouldn't see why they wouldn't call me. But uh, I, I really don't want people to uh, feel like I, I'm using my father's name in the wrong way or anything. Sure. I want to be my own man. Okay. That, that's, I that's think fine. me as a person, I feel very awkward doing all this. Mm. Uh, most of the times I don't because of that. Like it's it's like a thought going in my head, should I, should I not? And then I don't because I feel that it's a little too like trying to be what we call in Delhi, shape. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to do that and I just feel a little awkward. But for example, if there's a director who I know personally, mm. like for example, Sabir sir. So later if he's doing some film and I know about it and I feel that it's a great script and I would want to do it, I can anytime call him up and just say that, you know, if you right. feel that I fit the role. I'd love to hear what you think, Tahir. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Uh, it, it, yeah. would, it would really depend on who the director is. Mm. And, uh, but no, for, for me necessarily, I wouldn't have to know the person because I, I feel a lot of times when directors are caught up in scripting and production and then they're only looking at a certain number of people and if a phone call from me, and of course my call wouldn't say take me or consider me, it would be can we meet? Right. And because I've heard that you're talking about this uh, great project and I would just like to know more about it, something more subtle. Because you know, there are all these examples, especially in Hollywood where you hear of actors who put themselves on tape, yeah. Who, you know, who, who chase down a director and say, consider me, I think I'll yeah. be great for this part. Because I think every, and there's no shame in that. Yeah. There seems like there's a lot of awkwardness Because here, I, th I think every, every director or every creative person just uh, appreciates enthusiasm. Right. And as long as you can, that boundary of like, sure. chape, she said, <laughs> that boundary of chape and enthusiasm, yeah, if you know it, uh, you can do it in a, in a more sophisticated I think the moment. answer to my awkwardness is always a message. So it's not yeah. going to be a call, then it'll be a message first. Yeah. No, okay. but I'm representing myself. Mm. So I, people are very competitive. It's cutthroat competition. True. If I've got this one film, people do know me. Mm. Like the directors do know that there's somebody and she's making a call. And at the end of the day, if I don't get the project, it's fine. But I right. know I tried. Sure. You know? For me, I'm a really shy person. Right. But you know, I really didn't ever tell Shanu that acting is something I want to do, especially the job I was doing. I mm. didn't ever want her to think that this is my way of breaking into VRF. Right. Because it really wasn't. But uh, I don't know if I can... I, I'm, I'm, again, very awkward. I, I'm socially also really awkward. I don't think I can also go up to a director that I don't know and speak to them and tell them, hi, I'm Bhoomi, or there's a film of mine that's come out. So uh, I think your work definitely speaks for you. But uh, if I'm not that lucky where I don't get enough films, then I guess why not? I would go speak to somebody. But again, I would not like force myself on them or tell them, Ki nahi aap ye dekho, mera ye kaam dekho. but I'll definitely let them know that I'm here. If you're interested, why not? Bhumi, in your first film, Dam Laga Ke Haisha, uh, you play a character who's brought up in a small town, who's made to feel bad about her weight, and who's married off to a failure. And yet, throughout the movie, audiences feel that Sandhya is so cool. 
What was it about this character that spoke to you? What did you find attractive about Sandhya? The biggest thing about Sandhya was that she was really comfortable about her weight. True. You know, there are scenes in the film where you where they show her brother calling her Moti San. That's right. It's a very general pattern of every household. True. Because I have been an overweight girl. There were days where me and my younger sister would fight, and she would call me those things. Right. But that's not something you ever take to heart because mm. it's your family. You know. The best thing about the film is that they aren't making fun of overweight. People. Correct. It's not a film about a overweight girl either. It's a film about two complex people. If anything, people. if anything, the fact that she—you never actually see her being apologetic for exactly. it. Exactly. You never once see her trying to lose weight or exactly. to make an effort towards that. I thought those things were refreshing about Which the character. Which is me. So my biggest connect was that okay, Sandhya has a lot like me in a different mm. time and a different period. Right. So my biggest challenge was uh, not uh, her weight. My biggest challenge was how do I become. How do I turn myself from a Bombay girl to a girl that lives in Haridwar in the 90s? Right, right. Tiger comparisons with your father are inevitable, but you've said <laughs> that he's charming and bindas, and you're introverted and uptight. Yes, absolutely. Tell me, how do you work towards overcoming that in a profession that requires you to be so social? Well, as as myself, uh, I'm very awkward, very. Um, aloof in society mm. i i i feel very uncomfortable giving this interview for example i'll be honest with you and uh, it's just because i've isolated myself so much ever since i've started working so for example i'm most comfortable on stage performing or right. you know or when you're playing a part when i'm playing a part yeah because i'm not being me okay but being myself is the most difficult thing you know i because people are constantly has that become easier in the, in the in 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 since your release Sh sure i mean i have been practicing <laughs> so yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's become better. Yeah, okay. I won't lie. This is the most difficult part for me. Promotions are very difficult. Uh, being myself in public is very difficult. Okay. But you know, in City Lights, Rajkumar Rao and you played an immigrant couple who experience the dark side of the city of dreams. Yes. You know, our films don't often tell stories about people that live below the poverty line. As a first-time actor, who I'm guessing was completely unfamiliar with that milieu. What was the big challenge in keeping it real? You know, I found it very difficult initially because uh, the part that I played is of a rural woman and right. that's that's the life that I never lived. Mm. I had never seen villages before that. So, when I got the part, Hansa sir sent me to Rajasthan for 2 weeks just to adapt to the culture, to learn their language, the way they live, the way they spend their time. It's So, so it feels so, real on camera. Yeah, it's mm. very real. So once I adapted that, coming back to Bombay, it was very shocking. Coming back to Mumbai, you know, because things are very different here. Right. The, uh, the poverty line that we talk about mm. and the below the po it's it's draining. It's heart wrenching. I don't know what I'm going to play next, you know, but this will easily be one of my toughest films because. You know, they were nights that I just cried, 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 and thinking that, oh my God, what's the way that I can help them? Mm -hmm. Tahir, you're the only one on this table who worked with a big movie star in 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 your debut film. Um, was that ever intimidating working with someone like Rani Mukherjee in your first film? Um, I think I'm the kind of person where I, I feed a lot of the actor that I'm I'm playing with, and when the person who's with you on set right. uh, is, is Rani Mukherjee, you really have to up your game. Of so course, I think it was the pressure that got a lot uh, of uh, the performance. Got the best out, of you. Yeah, the best <laughs> of me. So, so she was it easy. It worked in a it, it worked in a in a good way. I mean, because the kind of role also that we were both playing, we were supposed to make life difficult for each for other. For each other, so right, right. It wasn't like we were laughing with each other on set and stuff. Mm. We were in character, so which added to it. Okay. Yeah. Kriti, you made the glamorous Hindi film heroine debut. Um, you know, at a time when the landscape of Hindi cinema is changing and when all different kinds of movies are being made, are you confident that you can adapt? Yeah, like um, I think one good part about my character was that, for me, was at least that she was from the outskirts of Delhi. Correct. So. She was somewhere in Haryana, so mm. it was slightly different. Right. Like her her uh, restrictions and her upbringing was a little different. Right. The way she thought was different, mm. but the way she spoke was a little similar to Delhi language. Right. So I could put in my own uh, things into it. Sure. You know, there were many times that I could put in my own uh, lingo into it. Uh, yeah, I think I 
would want to very soon kind of experiment with roles which are totally different because I think that's when you kind of challenge yourself more. Do you find that that question is asked of you very often because you made your debut, in, you know, as a glamorous heroine? Do you find that people expect that now show us that you can do a highway? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, and I would love to do a highway. I think that's a fabulous film, especially to, uh, you know, experience so much and just to prove yourself as an actor even more. Right. So I personally would love to do a non-glam film. I'm waiting for a Karik script to just so come my it's way. Always. Uh, the other way around. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, totally. That's why you want to do glamorous, <laughs> huh? No, no. Okay. Yeah. Not that I want to or I want to. That's a different ball altogether. Like Kriti has been constantly asked whether she can do a highway or right. whether she. I've been constantly asked the same thing. You think you can do a glam role? Absolutely. Can you do this? This is the first yeah. question yeah. I'm asked. Correct. So we are always trying to prove ourselves at every point. Right. I know, and, I, and I think the reverse is always like, I've been asked, will you dance if you need to? True. I don't know why they assume that, uh, you know, yeah, if Tiger Shroff dances, he won't do a serious Correct. role. Or Correct. if I do a serious role, I won't. Do you feel, do you all feel the need to prove that you can and therefore seek out the next film or the third film that allows you to, to show that there's more to just what we saw in the first film? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, you I have mean. to. I think as an actor, uh, a, a particular role can only show that much about you as an actor. True. If tomorrow I get a glamorous part where I'm all dolled up and I have to dance, I'll do it very happily because as an audience, as a person, I enjoy watching that sort of cinema. Right. I believe it would be a lot tougher for Kriti uh, to have such a glamorous role as her first film, you have to look a certain way, the kind of pressure you have, you have makeup, you have hair, you're wearing heavy jewellery, heavy clothes, it's not easy. And the dancing. And, and you're dancing, because I had one song and trust me, it was a lot of hard work. Okay. It was probably the most amount of work I put into the film, because we would rehearse for hours and I, I, I was like, wow, this is so I can see Tiger thinking, Sandhya. really? Song, dance, <laughs> hard work? Yeah, yeah. Song, dance, dance, hard work? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for me, sir, it's, you know, uh, you have to be self-aware as an actor. Mm. I think you need to know what your pluses and minuses are. Mm. And it's especially for the first uh, two films, at least three films, you have to make sure that you uh, create your own identity and uh, differentiate yourself, right. you know, from the crop. I mean, there's so many people who want to be part of the industry now. There's so many heroes coming in and who are already out there. And, and likewise for the heroines. But what are you bringing to the table? How are you different? How are you going to stand out? Right. I mean, I do, is, is this script worthy in my hands? Mm. Will I be able to do justice? At the mm. end of the day, it's, yeah. it's about just being the character and uh, honestly expressing yourself. Now, of course, it's great to be appreciated. But in this age of social media, criticism is also instant, isn't it? All of you I know are on Twitter. And I'm guessing it's not always rosy. Is that difficult to deal with, the harsh criticism sometimes, or just the abusive trolls? I kind of don't pay attention to, uh, especially the Twitter stuff mm. that you're saying. Uh, people talking negative about you, I don't really pay attention because you'll go mad if you listen to every person. Right. Um, but yes, if, if it's criticism about a film or your performance, uh, when uh, reviews come out, that's something that I do read because right. that's something that kind of helps you to make yourself better. Mm. Uh, but I take it in a positive way, like I just take it to make myself better and to improve. Uh, but uh, other than that, I feel you can't make everyone happy. True. So I think you need to limit yourself and just filter out those things that are coming to you. What is worth using and what is not. Sure. I think uh, it, it's definitely the one thing that changed after that Friday. I mean, besides the fact that people recognize you and that you've been appreciated, is that you're now in the literally public uh, sphere. And just being judged for everything sometimes can get, uh, especially when it's, it's so new. So I won't lie, the first time I read something that was negative, it did throw me back a little because to have a perfect stranger say something that's not nice. That's it, is, right. uh, is, is a bit, but then, you know, but you anyone understand. Is any, yeah. you know, Everyone's a critic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it did throw me off a, a bit, but 24 hours, I think it took me to get over it. And then it was you, this is a part of the game. You're going to have eight people say good things and yeah. two people say not such good things. And you just have to take it in your stride. Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, sure. I mean, the first promo of, uh, there was a song called Whistle Bajana. Mm. The first shot is of uh, my, uh, my lips uh, and the flute. 
I got a lot of crap for my uh, rosy led, red lips. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I was like, please just watch the song, watch, hear the song, look at the steps that we work so hard on. Please just don't, don't be focus. distracted yeah. by my rosy red lips. Exactly, but then again, you know, sir. I mean, who? We're just newcomers right now. Right. Yeah. Shah Rukh sir and Salman sir till date, you know, each have their own fan clubs and mm. haters and vice versa. So. Who are we to complain, really? You know? okay. Just the fact that people are talking about us is, yeah. is enough, and we're thankful for that. Yeah. Okay. I think for me, uh, I was really lucky that I had a film like Dam Laga Ke Haisha mm. kind of guarding me or shielding me. I really don't want to sound pompous, but the only negative thing that I read was my, people were really disappointed. There was an article that said that we are disappointed that she has lost weight and it, it had a toll on me. But then after that, I started seeing that people are appreciating it too. Right. So I've just realized I, I've been somebody who does, who I've never cared about what people think. I've always done what I've wanted. Mm. I lose weight when I want it. I'll gain weight when I want it. It's my body. I'll, do, I'll treat it the way I want it. And I think this is a mantra that I'm going to go by. But uh, definitely, if, if it is a, a constructive criticism, mm. you're human, you should always listen to what people say, but pick whatever you think is right and implement it in your life. Okay. So that's my mantra. Right. Likewise, um, I didn't get too many haters because I was mm. guarded because of Sari Lights. But you know, I get a lot of, you know, these blogs are constantly covering you, right. what clothes you're wearing right. and how you look. Listen. You know, it's taken us a lot of time to get here, mm. to perform the way we have. What clothes we wear, it's none of your business. You know, mm. how am I looking? It's none of your business. You know, my makeup is bad. It is bad for me. I had a bad hair day. Sure. Uh, you know, my makeup just didn't turn up the way it was supposed to. I chose that dress because I liked it. You know, that's the way I want to live my life. Go ahead, hate me, discourage my clothing, whatever. I don't care. Does it take a while to get to that point where you don't care? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's yeah. easier said than done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's taken me about two weeks. Then I was like, Wow, this, that's this quick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then I realized that this is going to go on, you know, but I mm. can't keep thinking that what went wrong. I have to move on. And actually, I'm not here to be a fashionista. And right. I'm here yeah. to be an actor. And if you guys are telling me because I haven't done well, my performance went haywire, then I, I accept. I'll listen, yeah. sure. Tiger, they made fun of your name, didn't they? Yes, Starting yes, out, I mean, yes. They didn't, I mean, I won't lie, there were a few good, good jokes on that one, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, just... And is that important, to also have a sense of humour about it? Absolutely. I, I, I think yeah. you yeah. can't it's survive. so yeah. sportingly, I mean, seriously. the fact that my name was up there alongside Rajini Khan sir, Alia Bhatt, I mean, I was like, wow, already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, I think also realising that at no point you can make everyone happy. True. That's never going to happen. So. But you know, I think uh, even now, if I, if I see a negative article about me, uh, probably in a paper or something, it is going to put me off. Sure. It's not like I'm human at the end of it. Right. So it does put you off, but you need to just learn to move on and just not pay too much attention to that thing. Well, I have to say that each of you, really every single one of you, brought your best game to your first films. Um, there's a lot of enthusiasm to see what you do next. Um, here's hoping, of course, that you will continue to entertain us with your next films um, in the manner that you have. Here's wishing you all the best for a very bright and exciting inning uh, ahead. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.